Greetings YouTubers and welcome to the gear bench. So why does a gear channel open with a video about food? Well, because food is fuel and fuel is gear. Liz Thomas from Long Trails on page 105. What you put in your tank for fuel is even more important than the gear you carry. That's why we're covering it first. Let me say right up front that I understand that what you eat is a uniquely personal choice. I am most definitely not telling anybody what they should eat. Only what you can eat if you want to save weight. So this video is for the people that carry their calories on their back and want to lighten that load. Now, on page 114, Ms. Thomas does some math for us. If you need 4,000 calories a day and your menu averages 100 calories per ounce, that's 40 ounces of food. But if you elevate your diet to 125 calories per ounce, that same 4,000 calories now weighs only 30 ounces. That's a 10 ounce savings per day. So for a five day resupply with a density of 100, you're looking at 12 and a half pounds of food but at 125 calories per ounce, your load drops by over three pounds. That weight savings alone more than makes up for a two person tent. So the bottom line, your food bag is by far this heaviest single component in your pack. And if you're an ultralighter, what you eat can easily outweigh every other item you carry put together. So if you care about weight, mind your munchies. It's not the so-called big three that matters most. It's actually this stuff right here. So unfortunately, there's no objective standard for what ultralight food should weigh. So how do we know what goals to set? Some might say that this bottle of olive oil is heavy. It weighs 471 grams. But heavy compared to what? This peanut butter weighs 504 grams. That's 33 grams more. But it has over a thousand calories less than this. Now, where are my cliff bar people? I know you're out there. This has 260 calories and it weighs 70 grams in the package. It would take over 10 bars to make the calories in this jar of peanut butter. It would take over 14 bars to make the calories in this bottle of olive oil. And those bars would weigh over a kilo, which is more than double what this weighs in the bottle. So heavy, it's actually quite the opposite. This is one of the lightest foods in existence. But there are limits, of course. You can't just drink olive oil for every meal. If you tried, you end up needing a whole lot of that. So, what is an ultralight but realistic goal? So to figure out what heavy and light calories look like, we have to consider what calories are made of. There are only three macronutrients that make up all the energy in food. It's carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. And here right from the USDA's website is how many calories are in a gram of each. So here you have it in black and white. There are literally only two weight classes of macronutrients. There's four calories per gram and nine. And get this, Carbs are tied with proteins for last place. Think about that for a minute. Carbs, it's refined white sugar. You know, what people hold up as pure energy. They're not the lightest way to carry calories. They're the heaviest. And protein is just as bad. Fats and only fats are lightweight. So starting at the heavy end, 4 calories per gram equals 113 calories per ounce. So whether it's rice, honey, pasta, expect foods that are all or mostly carbs and protein to be somewhere in that density range or worse. 
the only way to get below 113 is to add dead weight. Almost always in the form of water. Foods heavier than the heaviest types of calories can't logically be characterized as anything other than heavy. So if we round off, the threshold for heavy foods becomes 110 calories per ounce or less. It's a semi-objective place to start. And from there, we go to our experts, two of the most prolific hikers in the world. Justin Lichter has hiked more than 35,000 career miles. He's not only triple crowned the big three U.S. trails, he did it in one year. He also hiked all over the world. And on page 109, quote, anything under 110 calories per ounce has water weight. Water is heavy and has no calories, so it's a lose-lose for hiking food. So what does he suggest? Foods with calories per ounce of 125 or greater is ideal for hiking. And then finally, we have Andrew Skirka. He also has more than 30,000 miles on his feet, including the Triple Crown. But he's also done epically remote treks like the 4,700-mile Alaska-Yukon expedition. And at times, he's had to go two weeks without resupply. Imagine carrying 14 days worth of food on your back. So for him, density matters. Skirka sets 125 as his minimum density but he prefers much closer to 150. So 125 calories per ounce seems somewhat agreed upon as the starting place for lightweight. So between that and heavy, there's an area that's 15 calories per ounce wide that we'll call moderate. And to keep the category sizes consistent, very light would then run from 140 to 155, and beyond that, you get true ultralight food, charted here in the range of 155 to 170. And for those precious snacks even lighter still, we have Hyperlite. Okay, that does it for book theory. Let's get on to a practical application. You know how hikers do gear shakedowns for each other, where they'll go through your bag and tell you all the ways that you can lighten up? Well, let's do a virtual gear shakedown of somebody's food bag. So I found a YouTube video that specifically addresses ultralight food. And I used the food items recommended to make a sample menu that I'm calling Meal Plan A. And as you can see, there's 13 items there. They weigh just over 18 ounces. And it equals uh, 1,639 calories which is a half day's calories at best when you're hiking. It seems fine, it's all tasty stuff, but look what happens when we add columns for density. As it turns out, there's only a couple of high density options there, and everything else is heavy. And when you look at the daily totals, the average density for the entire meal plan is only 90 calories per ounce. Next, I created an alternate menu, a meal plan B. And to keep it fair, I did my best to match the calories exactly. I also tried to match the proteins, because I know for a lot of folks, there's a concern about getting enough protein while out on the trail. But look at the difference in the calories per ounce. By choosing only high-density items, it goes from 90 to 157. That's from heavy to ultralight for the same number of calories. And look what that does to the weight. You save almost eight ounces. That's a half a pound. And remember, this is just a half a day's calories. If you were to double that out, you could save up to a pound a day just by making these simple changes. So for the same calories and the same protein, but half a pound less, where does the weight go? From carbs to fats. At this point, I should also point out, we went from 13 individual food items down to eight. So we're not just losing ounces, we're losing cubic inches. And that can be real important when you're trying to fit all of your food into a bear canister. 
<laughs> At this point, I realize I've said the word fat enough to have some people thinking about nutrition. A few comments. One, this is not for everyday eating. This is for high exertion hiking, which has different caloric needs. Also, try to keep in mind that what may be an issue for you is not necessarily an issue for other people. But lastly, I'm not running away from the nutrition issue. I got a whole video planned on that, but this one's already going to run long. And so I'm doing my best to keep it only about calorie density. The chart's a project I've been working on for over two years, researching anything that anybody said was good hiker food so that I could catalog it and then sort it by calorie density. This allows you to just browse through a list so that you can pick out things that are lighter than what maybe you normally carry. It makes ultralight meal planning simple. So here it is, the master list. Well, page one anyway. I've got well over a thousand items all together. First of all, everything is grouped by class. Now I invented these and they're fairly subjective, but at least they allow you to compare bars to bars as opposed to pastries or nut butters or meat sticks. Next, you have both brand and flavor, and both of those are important. We'll get to that in a bit. Then you have the weight. And mind you, this is the weight of one serving as listed on the food label. So just bear that in mind. Not all serving sizes are the same. That leads to the calories per serving. And with weight and calories, we can compute density. And these columns have been color coded according to the weight key that we established earlier. And then lastly, even though I'm not really addressing nutrition in this video, uh, I did include the fats, carbs, and proteins since that's such basic information. I know a lot of people would probably like to see it. So let's look at the chart. There's some lessons that we can extract by looking at all this data that will help you when you go into an unfamiliar selection and be able to pick out what are likely some of the highest density options for you rather than standing there in the store with your calculator looking at labels one at a time. Going alphabetically, our first category is bars. And not only are bars probably one of the most popular kinds of trail food, it's also our biggest category. I think I have 267 different bars here. One of the things that you can see is out of all those options, only three are ultra light. And all three of those are made out of coconut. So lesson number one would be, if you're looking for high density, look for stuff made out of coconut. These umchu bars are delicious. They're essentially just shredded coconut pressed together with a little sugar, maybe some almonds, some cocoa nibs. But this leads us to another one of our lessons, and that is that flavor matters. Eat what you enjoy, but just bear in mind that depending on which flavor you choose, you can go all the way from ultralight all the way down to moderate, almost heavy. So getting back to our chart, we can see that out of 267 bars compared, almost half of the top 30 are kind bars. And before anybody says it, no, I'm not sponsored by anybody. I'm not selling anything. Numbers are numbers. And that brings us to our last lesson for a while, which is that brand matters, even more so than flavor. Let's compare two popular types. So charted next to each other, just look at the difference between the two. The kind bars are almost exclusively very light, whereas cliff bars are almost universally heavy. And I'm not knocking cliff bars, they're delicious. I eat them all the time doing yard work. But for the trail, I prefer something lighter and more compact. Getting enough protein in an extremely high density diet can be a bit of a challenge. So I wanted to highlight some of the best protein options in your top 30. These Power Crunch bars are like those wafer cookies your grandma used to give you as a kid. Very tasty, very lightweight, 13 grams of protein. Also, Taos Mountain makes these energy bars. The Maple Praline, one of the best. And then Kind makes protein-specific bars as opposed to the regular flavors. 
Well, because it is the top 30, just a few more honorable mentions. Ocho's little PB&J bars, the size of my fingers, 210 calories. Nature Valley makes these almond butter filled cinnamon biscuits. They're like sandwich cookies. They're fantastic. And then if you have nut allergies, getting enough density is going to be a lot harder for you. So in the bar world, one of your best options might be Health Warriors Pumpkin Seed Superfood Bar with honey, cracked pepper, and turmeric. So moving on to page two, we drop a weight class, but it's still pretty good stuff. We got more kind bars here. Still lightweight, but no longer very light. And you can see the difference is that they begin to emphasize fruit. Fruit is sugar, sugar is heavy. Lara bars make an appearance. They come in many flavors, but uh, like the kind bars, it's the nuts, coconut, and chocolate flavors that are the highest density. The fruits will be further down the list. And we talked about cliff bars. Uh, the regular ones tend to be rather heavy, but they do have other types, including these nut butter filled ones, where it's kind of the standard cliff bar cookie like material, but uh, it's actually been filled with a nut butter. And they're pretty good, by the way. On the next page, we can see we're going to have the last of the lightweight bars. Some of my favorites include these meal replacements by ProBar. One of the things I like about them is the portion size. They're almost 400 calories, whereas most bars are in the 200 calorie range. Uh, they're just snacks. These Pro Bars are a little bit closer to lunch on the go. And considering their number of calories, they're amazingly compact. Similarly, you've got the Gatorade Recover Bars. They're also getting close to 400 calories. Uh, a little bit bulkier, but uh, double the protein of the Pro Bars. And then lastly, the Picky Bars has several flavors. There's some uh, benefits I like about the nutritional ratios in these, which you'll have to wait for the nutrition video. But it's nice to know that you can get those benefits and still have something that is lightweight. So as we keep moving down the list, we seem to be getting more and better protein options, which shouldn't be a surprise because protein's heavy. So the more of it there is, the less density there'll be. In this area, one of my favorites taste-wise is uh, Robert Irvine's Fit Crunch Bars. They got a full 30 grams of protein. They are almost 400 calories, but uh, unlike your average bar, which is, let's be honest, it's just an extruded mass of goo that's cut to shape and then wrapped, these are actually baked like cookies. And he's a celebrity chef, so the man knows how to cook. So moving down further still, Green Belly Bars make an appearance at 140th place on the list. There's been ample suggestion on the internet that they are an ultralight solution. They are 118 calories per ounce. They do have the largest portion size of any bars listed here at 645 calories, but, uh, you know, they're twice as big as a Pro Bar, so there's no magic there. So as we keep going, we're getting towards the lower end of moderate. You start to see things like these uh, RX bars and Go Macro. Also, uh, Metrix bars, which are 32 grams of protein, over 400 calories, and marketed as a meal replacement. Next, as we finish up with the moderates and move into the actually heavy bars, that's where you'll see most of your Cliff bars. And then on the last page of bars, uh, we actually see some kind bars. They're these pressed fruit and chia. Again, fruit's sugar, sugar's heavy. With all of my research in bars, I mean of bars, I became curious about these emergency food rations. But they're one of those things that seem heavy. I mean, this brick here is over a pound and a half. But... It's 3,600 calories. I mean, that'll fuel a hungry hiker for an entire day. So, how's the density? Turns out, they're all lightweight. Three of them are even very light. The Mainstay, the Grizzly, and the Daytrix. They do tend to come in different sizes. Any given brand uh, usually will offer like a 1,200 calorie size, a 2,400 calorie, or a 3,600 calorie. And some of them, like the Daytrix here, they're broken up into smaller pieces inside the wrapper so you can have 400 calorie portions. So if taste and food fatigue are issues for you, 
we have these new millennium energy bars. And essentially they're the same thing as an emergency food ration. They're even manufactured by SOS. They just come in flavors. You got eight of them and you know what? They're surprisingly good. And then at the bottom of the emergency bars list, we have Tac Bar, Tactical Food Rations, because putting it in a black label makes it tactical. So I've got one last subcategory of bars that I developed for a friend of mine, and he can get so sick of sugary snacks on the trail, he's just craving anything salty. So obviously you can go to meat sticks, potato chips, a different category, but it got me thinking about savory food bars. It turns out there's not that many, but there are some very light options, and those include these strong and kind bars. Now I'll say savory in quotes because they are still glued together with sugar, but they have a more savory sounding spice flavors like barbecue, hickory smoke, mustard, roasted jalapeno, and Thai sweet chili. Savory Harvest makes some lightweight options. They've got a sriracha, barbecue, and the pizzas are all gone because I ate them. All in all, I found out that I actually kind of like them. They are something different, so the variety can be nice. Uh, and as I said, these are very light, and they do have uh, 10 grams of protein each. Right, so nobody wants to eat bars all day, every day. And if you watch the YouTubes, you know that many a hiker likes their tortillas. In fact, they even make the top 10 ultralight foods lists in some places. So I looked at a variety of things from wraps to bagels to sandwich rolls and traditional sliced bread. The bad news is that all bread is heavy. The good news is that if you are going to carry something, tortillas are one of your lightest options. In fact, the only thing I could find that was lighter was the King's Hawaiian Sweet Hamburger Buns at 92 calories per ounce. This next category is one I call bumps. These aren't food products in their own right. They're things that you would add to other dishes to enhance their qualities. A classic example would be spices. Those are flavor bumps. What we're after are calorie bumps, products that you can add to other dishes to enhance their density. And as you can see, there are several Hyperlite options. Fourth and Heart has this ghee butter. It's clarified butter, so they remove the milk solids leaving it essentially 100% pure fat. And it rings in at 255 calories per ounce. Then of course you have your aforementioned olive oil, also nearly perfect density. It's so good that even in the bottle it makes a good carry. But if you prefer, Marconi makes these 11 milliliter packets that you can get on Amazon. And then you have your Hoosier Hill Farms powders. They got heavy cream, butter powder. They also make a cheddar cheese powder and a milk powder, but these are the hyperlight options. Just put a scoop in your granola or in your freeze-dried entree and you are good to go. One of the founding principles of this project was not to just make a list of things I like to eat, but to find out as much as what you like by watching your videos so that I could include it all into one big list for comparison. Believe it or not, I found more than one person that still likes to go out into the woods with good old Dinty Moore beef stew in the can. It may not surprise you to hear that canned goods are pretty heavy. The absolute best I could find was this Hormel's corned beef hash. You can't get more calories in a tin anywhere. And the lowest was Progresso's light soups. They're almost all water, but good if you're on a diet. In this next category, we get to talk about candy. And there are several hyperlight options, which are exclusively dark chocolate. Seems like the darker the better. And the best of the best is this green and black's dark 85%. Of course, there are several good options with chocolate mixed with nuts. And for the nut averse, we have these sesame crunch snacks. Ultralight and very light. And then, of course, you have good old M&M's. Again, the ones with nuts tend to be the best. I like the almond-filled ones here. Oh, uh oh This bag appears to be open. I'll 
page two, we see several offerings from Reese's. Different formats, but they're all chocolate and peanuts, so they're all very light. And that includes one of my all-time favorites, the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. This is also where we see that hiker staple, the Snickers bar. They come in several flavors now. This isn't even all of them. Uh, but believe it or not, they're only lightweight. It's only the peanut butter squares that are very light. And on this last page of candies is where you'll find your Milky Way bars, still in the lightweight category. But then you come to things like hard candies which I've heard described as high calorie and dense. They even used to put them in old time survival kits. But contrary to intuition, they're not lightweight. They're only moderate. And similarly, gummy bears, jelly beans, and red vines and Twizzlers, they're all just pure sugar, which makes them heavy. When you're base camping, gourmet breakfast can be a real nice treat. But when I'm hiking, I prefer to just break my fast and get on the trail. So cereal has become my go-to choice. Turns out, they're moderate or worse, with one notable exception. Only granolas qualify as light or very lightweight. And those are just dry granola. You can eat it out of the bag like trail mix, but if you want cereal, you'll have to repackage it into Ziplocs, and then you can add some of those bumps we talked about, like the whole milk and the cream powders. Now, if you like all the work done for you, Backpacker's Pantry has these convenient one and two serving sizes and they come in with a gusseted bottom so they'll stand on their own and they have the whole milk powder included so all you got to do is add water and eat it right out of the bag. Growing up these Quaker instant oatmeal packets were the breakfast around the campfire so I must say I was a little disappointed to find out where they fit on the list. And the same goes for a few more of my favorite breakfast cereals. With all that I've been going on about fat, you'd think that cheese would have a lot of calories for the weight. But the reality is, it's moderate at best. There must be way too much moisture. And the reason I think that is because the only ultralight option out there is this moon cheese, which is 100% real cheese, it's just been freeze-dried, so all the water weight has been removed. One of the things I've noticed while doing this project is that there's sometimes a confusion between best hiking food and lightest hiking food. Best can mean lots of things. Tastes good, inexpensive, convenient. And just because something's conveniently packaged for the field doesn't make it lightweight. Similarly, you can make the portions very small so that it feels lightweight, but that doesn't mean that there's a good number of calories per ounce. And these single serving cheese products seem to be the case in point, though they're often recommended. Now there are hundreds of cookies and I only charted some of them, but the only ultralight one I could find was Keebler's Pecan Shortbread Sandies. But in the very light category, Found an unusual option. You got Reese's Snacksters. It's graham cracker dipping sticks with a peanut butter chocolate spread. Or you could bring a whole bag of double stuffs. That's one of the advantages of hiking. It lets you eat all the stuff you're normally not supposed to. Now, a little bit lower in density, but I did find some protein options here. Buff Bake makes these protein sandwich cookies. They're moderate. And then they have their large soft bake cookie like the Len and Larry's Complete Cookie. Both 16 grams of protein, but they're kind of heavy. Fig Newtons come in at the bottom of the list. Next up, chips and crackers. I looked at a broad cross section. Everything from potato chips to corn chips to pretzels, crackers, Cheetos, you name it. And the best of the best, you can't beat deep fried. Good old classic potato chips. In many ways, they're kind of an ideal hiker food. They're ultralight, they're delicious, and they've got good sodium for electrolytes. In fact, 
one of their only drawbacks is they're bulky. And we all know what you can do about that. So by now, we're starting to get a feeling for how things work. Fried is good, baked is bad. So things like potato chips will be near the top of the list, and things like pretzels and crackers will be near the bottom. And if you're going to do something like carry reduced fat items, you might as well just bring this. Some people get sick of drinking water all day every day, and if that water tastes bad, you might want to flavor it. So, I took a look at some drink mixes. Now, obviously things like unsweetened coffee or crystal light packets have zero calories and so zero density. I did not bother to chart those things. But I did take a look at a variety of things that do provide some fuel with their flavor. Included are your campfire classics, like your hot cocos and your spice ciders. And they're all pretty mediocre. Your only hyperlight options are these fuel fudge packets. I guess the keto people are squeezing fat into their coffee. Below that, you have your dry milk. It's very light. Mind you, that's the whole milk powder. The non-fat is heavy. And then for the coffee people, you've got your Starbucks Instant. All the various flavors are in the moderate range. And of course, the iced coffee ones that dissolve in cold water, which are the ones that I like, are heavier. While we won't be getting into nutrition in this video, there are some nutrient-driven drink mixes that bear discussion from a density standpoint. You've got your protein powders that come in 10 and 20 gram pouches. There's your Gatorade style electrolyte and sugar mixes, which includes these Tailwind Nutritions. They come flavored, unflavored, some of which are caffeinated. Unfortunately, they're all heavy, but their purpose may outweigh their lack of density. See what I did there? But if weight is a concern, just be aware that some electrolyte products are sugar-free, so zero calories, zero density. Fruit is something that a lot of people report cravings for after enough days in the field, so let's take a look at some of the ways you can carry it. Not surprisingly, Coconut chips end up being your lightest option, followed by banana chips with the dark chocolate covered ones being better than the plain. As far as your conventional dried fruits go, like the ones you get in the grocery store, they are all heavy. The dried just means dehydrated. Not all the water has been removed. And that applies whether you're talking about your fruit leathers or your whole fruits. Now, if you're talking about actual freeze-dried fruit, while it is incrementally lighter than dried fruit, it still hovers right around that threshold for heavy. On page two, we see some fresh fruits. You got everything from raw bananas and oranges to fresh apple slices, avocados, and applesauce. And obviously, they're all extremely heavy. In fact, everything there but the avocados is significantly heavier than our old friend, the corned beef hash. And that's what this project is about. Perspective, not preference. Obviously, hash is no replacement for fruit, if fruit is what you want. But just know what it's costing you in terms of weight. And fresh fruit isn't just heavy, it bruises easily, it's got a short shelf life. So I looked at some other options for how you might get your fruit fix in the field. And that would be these squeeze packs. You can get blended flavors like apple peach and apple grape. They've got protein enhanced ones like this smash pack with 14 grams of protein. Or you've got things like this chia squeeze blackberry bliss. In terms of weight, they're all just as bad as fresh fruit, but they might be a little more practical in your pack. Energy gels are one of those areas where our intuition might fail us. You might think they have to be dense, Runners use them. Nope, they're just sugar and a little bit of water. And that goes for whether you're talking about the chews, the gels, these honey packets, or these protein shots. It's all heavy. And that goes in particular for things like this five-hour energy. Energy is a scientifically 
definable quantity, and there is only one unit for energy in food, and that is calories. There's only four calories in this. So that is not five hours of energy. It's five hours of stimulants, and that's not the same thing. It's salty, it's shelf stable, there's no prep so you can eat it on the go. It could be the perfect way to get your carnivore on while hiking. But it doesn't matter whether you're talking about turkey, pork, beef, steak, it's universally heavy. But wait, what's that at the top of the list? Bacon to the rescue. And of all the ones I searched, the Walmart brand was the lightest. For every hiker out there craving fruit, there's another one craving meat. So I made sure to flush this next category out with two full pages of options. Turns out your lightest are your meat sticks. And that includes everything from summer sausage to pepperoni to chorizo. The best of which are these Old Trapper deli style beef sticks. And the heaviest is actually this chef's cut beef and pork stick. You can also buy fully cooked bacon or bacon bits. They're shelf stable. Bacon makes everything better. And then you have meat bars. They're not like jerky. They're not sliced from the whole. It's chopped meat that's been pressed into shape. But they add ingredients so you can get flavors like turkey and buffalo with cranberries or chicken sriracha and mango jalapeno pork. And at the very bottom of the list, once again, we have some of our hiker favorites. These tuna packets have become so popular that Starkist is even marketing this outdoors pouch. But be careful though, if you drop it in the wilderness, you may never find it again. Bear in mind also the differences. This packet has more than two and a half times the calories of this one for the exact same weight. The difference is that this is packed in extra virgin olive oil and this is packed in water. And better than any of the tunas, you have this little gem right here. You either love it or it's a four letter word. And then putting everything in perspective, ordered from lightest to heaviest, our hash fits right here. Let's take a break from how depressingly heavy all our favorite things are and talk about that unicorn of the hiking food world that is both addictively good and ultra high density. Nut butter. And coming in right at the top of the list are Skippy's Singles, not the jar. For some reason, they have different nutrition labels on them. Skippy's claiming that these single serve cups have more fat per ounce. For what it's worth, they look and taste exactly the same to me. And Jif also makes single serve cups, and they list a density that's more on a par with the jar. Aimed directly at the outdoor crowd, Boggs makes a few flavors of trail butter. This was my favorite, the Mountaineer Maple, and their only Hyperlite option. Unfortunately, they no longer make this anymore. They changed the recipe and lowered the density, but they are still ultra light and tasty. They come in either these single serve tear off pouches or this four serving size with a resealable cap. It's a whole mix of different kinds of nuts and seeds and maple syrup, honey, sea salt, vanilla. 800 calories in the palm of your hand. Some more ultralight options. Justin has a range of butters from almond to peanuts to hazelnuts, and they've got flavors like honey, chocolate, and maple, as well as classic. And then Peanut Butter and Company makes Smooth Operator, which is unique in that it's a no-stir peanut butter, unlike some of these other ones where the oils and the solids can separate, and in cooler weather it can be a little bit like deep tissue massage, getting them ready for consumption.
Now if you really want to go gourmet, Probar has things like this coconut and mixed berry almond butters, or sriracha peanut butter blend, or this coca mocha, which is almond butter with espresso and 25 milligrams of caffeine. Wild Friends is also getting into the act. They've got vanilla espresso, almond butter, chocolate coconut peanut butter, which brings up the issue, what to do for people with allergies. Wild Friends also has this organic maple sunflower butter, which is ultra light as well. And there are a couple of other no nut butters that are hyper light. And if butters are good, nuts themselves can be even better with the king of the camp being these Mauna Loa dry roasted macadamias at a whopping 202 calories per ounce. Another convenient option can be these Blue Diamond Smokehouse Almonds that come in these nice little packs. They also come in flavors now. You got wasabi and soy sauce and others, and they're all the same calories. And in the seed world, you have multiple Hyperlite options, including these pumpkin seeds that are dry roasted and already been shelled. So eating them is quicker and faster and there's less litter. But as you go from salty to sweet, you drop in density. At the bottom of page one, you'll find these Sahali Snacks Honey Almonds. And then at the bottom of page two, you've got the True North Cashew Crunch Squares, which are fiendishly good, but not even lightweight anymore. I have a sweet tooth. So I looked at a series of miscellaneous baked goods that I'm calling pastries. Now in general, you can see that your options are pretty moderate, but there is one very light option. Honey Stinger makes these waffles in a variety of flavors. And they are extremely compact. I'm telling you, there's nothing like slapping some peanut butter on a chocolate waffle. You got 350 calories that you'll forget in your pocket. Hostess has a variety of options. Some of the lightest include their donuts, ding-dongs, and these ho-hos. Pop-tarts are popular because of their convenience, but they run from moderate to heavy as we work our way on to page two. And what's this at the bottom of the list? Twinkies. But that's okay. I don't take these hiking. What I do is sit on the couch with a jar of Mrs. Gear Skeptic's homemade salted caramel sauce. If you watch enough YouTube hiking videos, you'll get the impression that side dishes are popular with the through hiking crowd. I mean, there's entire videos dedicated to the right way of making a ramen bomb. So, let's see how they rate. Unfortunately, there are no ultralight options. There are no very light options. And there's essentially only one lightweight option. Ramen. And it is an all-time classic in all the flavors of the rainbow. There are some options at the very bottom end of moderate, but from here on out, it's mostly heavy. And that includes these Nor pasta and rice sides which are undoubtedly popular because of the flavor variety and the convenience, but it wouldn't be because of the weight. As we've already seen, there are literally hundreds of other products you could carry that would be lighter. Also in this category would be the Idahoan Instant Mashed Potatoes. They also have good flavor variety and the same just add boiling water convenience, but they are not lightweight. You may have noticed that one hyperlight option there right at the top of the list. It's these Ova Easy egg crystals, freeze dried egg powder. You just add water and mix. But bear in mind, they still need to be cooked. Although, it occurs to me as I sit here surrounded by all this food, you might be able to drizzle this mixture into the boiling water of your ramen and make hikers egg drop soup. And then down at the bottom of page one, you've got some of your classics like your Kraft macaroni and cheese and minute rice, both at 105 calories per ounce. 
On page two, we see some more Nor and Idahoan flavors, as well as everything from Jello instant pudding to stovetop stuffing and Velveeta shells and cheese, which are way down there at 84 calories per ounce. And for the couscous and quinoa crowd, I have got half dozen options in there for you. And at the bottom of page two, you can get ready pasta, which is fully cooked pasta in a bag. And on page three, same thing with Uncle Ben's ready rice and Prego's ready meals, all fully cooked, full of water, and very heavy. Once again, we have our corned beef ordered from light to heavy, goes right here. Hashtag perspective. I saw that some people like to carry these instant soup packets. So real quick, I looked at a few options. Not much to say there. And so it happens that our very last category is actually the one that started it all. The original hiking food. People tend to talk about trail mix like it's all one thing. But there are dozens of types at least. And once again, we see the lesson that brand and flavor matter. River Trail makes several flavors of bag mix, most of which is very light, although they did have the only two ultralight options I came across, as well as the only hyperlight option, which was the single highest density commercial mix that I could find. And that would be the River Trail Party Mix, which is a bunch of nuts and seeds and some pretzels, these baked wheat flour crunchies, and they're all cooked in spices and oil, the way you would cook party mix, which probably contributes to the density. Kirkland, which is Costco's brand, sells these conveniently packaged single-serve trail mixes, which is the traditional recipe of nuts, raisins, and M&Ms. As Andrew Skirka points out, never underestimate the value of portion control. Some of the beef jerky makers are getting into the trail mix game. Epic has some flavors like Bacon Lust, Coconut Carnivore, and Honey Harvest. And on page two, we see that Alberto has a couple of jerky mixes like this original beef and this spicy sweet. You may have noticed at the very top of page one, something you cannot find in stores. Having researched the calories per ounce of the various ingredients, I decided to design a recipe specifically for high density. Behold, Skeps Mix. Just three ingredients, dry roasted macadamia nuts, almond M&Ms, and dried cherries. It just happens to be the highest of the high density trail mixes. Well, that does it for the food. And if you were able to swallow all that, you've got the stomach for one last topic. Everything we've discussed so far has been about the contents, not the container. And I wanted to get just a brief understanding of how package weight affects the carried density. And peanut butter comes in a jar or in these cups. Now, Obviously, the bigger one's heavier. We're not talking about serving size here. We're talking about package weight efficiency. So the question is, if I carried a stack of these cups with enough peanut butter to equal what's in here, which one would be heavier? Turns out, each type of package reduces its carried density by 13 calories per ounce. It's a tie. And that happens because each package has its own advantages. These cups have this very lightweight little foil lid, as opposed to the heavy plastic one. But the jar has a better ratio of volume to surface area, which means you'll get more grams of peanut butter per gram of plastic than you do in the smaller package. So it actually does not matter whether you choose to carry one of these or several of these from a weight perspective. But there is another way. These foil packets 
only reduce the carried density by six calories per ounce, which is less than half the debit you get from either of these plastic containers. And lastly, foil packets themselves come in different sizes, like these one and four serving options from Trail Butter. And once again, you have the same dynamics of the inherent efficiency of a larger container being offset by the bulkier cap, giving you reductions in carry density of 9 and 11 calories per ounce, respectively. Wait a minute. What about Mountain House? This stuff is a hiker's staple. Look, there's even hikers on the label. Well, I did look at freeze-dried food and not just Mountain House, several manufacturers, hundreds of meals, but it's just too much for all one video. So stay tuned for part two, where we find out how freeze-dried meals fit into the density hierarchy. Well, that is all, folks. The entire chart is available for download as a portable document. Just check the link in the description below. And I very much appreciate your time.